Hello and welcome back to the channel. So a few days ago now, I had my swim stroke analysed by a local triathlete by the name of Jack Cutchins. Now Jack's actually recently turned professional by winning the Outlaw Half in Nottingham a few weekends ago, so congratulations to him on that. So I did already know of Jack through us sharing a lane at the local leisure centre quite a few times, and I was always astonished about how flawless his technique looked and how effortless he made swimming look. I knew there was definitely something I could learn from him, so I was really fortunate to find out that he actually offered swim analysis sessions in which he analyzes your swim stroke and then offers coaching points on how to improve it. I was already booked in with Jack, but as you may know, if you've watched some of my previous videos, I broke my foot not too long ago. And so we had to rearrange, but we did manage to get that done and we had the swim analysis a few days ago. Today's video is gonna be a recap of the swim analysis and I'll explain what I took away from it to help me improve my stroke. We'll start off with how the session worked and then take a look at some of the issues with my stroke and the suggestions Jack gave to improve it. So the session was based at an endless pool in Biddeford, um, the nearby town, and it was actually my first time using an endless pool. When I arrived, Jack asked me about my goals, uh, the previous races I've done, what I'm planning on doing in future, a bit about my swim history, and what I was looking to get out of the session. I was soon to jump in the pool, and at that point I was just swimming as I would normally. No coaching points or anything like that at this point. Jack was going around with his GoPro filming different angles from the front and from the sides, out of the water and under the water as well. He then transferred these shots to his MacBook where we could see them in detail on the bigger screen. Now what I really appreciated Jack doing, which other coaches may not, is not directly telling me what was actually wrong with the stroke. He gave me the opportunity to look at the footage and gave me the opportunity to see where I thought the stroke was breaking down. Jack then gave me a single coaching point on how to correct this aspect of the stroke and then we put into practice. What I particularly liked was being able to practice each element of the stroke one at a time. I didn't have to worry about trying to remember everything at once and it was taken on a very step-by-step -step basis. One thing I really appreciated Jack doing, which I actually made him aware of before we started the session, was limiting the number of key takeaways he gave me. So I end up with three coaching points on how to improve the stroke, which I was really pleased about. I didn't want to come away with having 20 things to try and think about all at once and not being able to improve on any of them. So that was a quick overview on how the swim analysis worked. Now let's take a look at some of the aspects of my stroke Jack thought could do of improving and how I can correct them. The first issue with my stroke was actually my head position. And I didn't realize I was doing this until Jack showed me the footage. But essentially, as I'm swimming, I lift my head up and forward before rotating to the left to breathe. So I was almost doing uh, like a circle with my head. So I was moving up, to the side, down, and back forward again like that. So something to work on was keeping my head in a fixed position. My key focus is to keep my head in line with the spine and only rotating it with the body when I come to breathe. Something else Jack picked up on was that I tend to face directly downwards uh, to the bottom of the pool, whereas I should be looking down and slightly in front maybe one to two meters, depending on the depth of the pool. This is where I need to keep my head fixed when I'm not breathing. And again, when I am breathing, just rotate to the side, no backwards and forward motion. The second coaching point I got was on the hand entry and the extension. When we reviewed some of the footage, what I was doing with my hands was quite interesting. So with my left hand, I was entering the water at an angle, which I'll come to in a minute, and it was actually crossing the midline. Whereas my right hand is again entering the water at an angle, but also to the opposite of the midline, if that makes any sense. If I hold my hands out, this is essentially where my hands are entering the water. A bit like that. So rather than being in front of me, directly in front, in line with my shoulders like that, my hands are going in like that. So the coaching point I took away from this was to make sure the hands enter the water flat, with an ever so slight gap between the fingers and also keep the hands in line with both shoulders. So the final coaching point I took away from Jack was around the catch. And based on what I've done so far, I think this is gonna be the hardest one to try and correct. So what we found was that after my hand had entered the water and my arm had extended, there was too much downward pressure and not enough backward pressure. The focus here is to drop the hand, wrist and forearm below the elbow, making sure that the elbow goes over the wrist and that the forearm is kept vertical throughout the stroke. My hands were getting a little bit lazy, so I was leaving this position 
too early. So another key takeaway is to extend this movement past the hip. It was really quite interesting seeing the footage. I, I didn't realize I was doing it, but essentially as my hand entered the water, rather than going like that, as Jack told me, what my hand and arm was doing was basically going backwards like that. So my forearm was essentially parallel to the bottom of the pool. So they were the three major issues that Jack found with my stroke and the coaching points I was given on how to correct them. So I just wanted to talk now briefly about my experience in swimming in an endless pool. So as I mentioned earlier, this is my first time in an endless pool. And to be honest, I found it a little bit awkward, but I think that's mainly due to my size. So I'm six foot five and it felt like I was constantly touching the end of the pool where the current is generated from. I'm also not used to swimming in such shallow water. So I do wonder if part of this threw off my stroke a little bit. There's also seating around the outside of the pool as it's used for rehab and as part of a spa. Now this limited the space a little bit and I was a bit conscious about not being too far back in the pool where my feet were kicking the seats, but not so far in front that my hands were catching the front of the pool. Now it was definitely a good experience to be able to swim in an endless pool, but even if money weren't a factor, I probably wouldn't go out and buy one. So the overall experience with Jack and the swim analysis was fantastic. I had a really good time. I took a lot away from it and found it very worthwhile. Jack very quickly saw the issues with my stroke that were holding me back. And it was things I'd have never even considered myself. So to have a second pair of eyes and pick up on these minor details really made a big difference. If you're interested in having Jack analyze your swim stroke, I would highly recommend him if you're in the North Devon area or if you're willing to travel down this part of the country. I've left the link to Jack's Instagram page in the description below. So be sure to drop him a message if you fancy a swim analysis yourself. Thanks so much for watching. The next video will be putting into practice what I learned from Jack and documenting the things I'm doing to ultimately become a better swimmer. You can click on the screen just there to see my previous video, which was me documenting my first run back after breaking my foot. If you enjoyed the video, please drop it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.